Welcome back to Landscape Photography on a Budget. Uh, this week we're going to be going through some tips on how to get stunning images with your kit lens. Obligatory bed, uh, cheap, halfway through we speaking. Um, now at this point I'd, I'd normally ask you to subscribe and like and comment all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do it this week. I'm not going to do it. Not only am I bringing you some great tips this week, I've also got you a little present. I've got you a little uh, ring light so you can see this beautiful face a little bit clearer. Oof, just like a young Charlie Bronson. So a lot can be said for, for kit lenses, especially if you look online, you'll find quite a bit of negative stuff. Um, but on this show, on this channel, we're just going to focus on the positive stuff. You know, I'm very much uh, pro kit lens, team kit lens. So yeah, we'll focus on that positive stuff. It's cheap. Uh, yeah, it's, it's budget, it's affordable, it's a good all-rounder, so you get it with your kit, that's why it's called a kit lens, you get it as part of your camera, and you don't have to worry about getting another lens, you, you know this will do a majority of jobs, and also it's a great tool to uh, teach you photography, to learn with, and not only that, you can get stunning images with them. I'll throw a few images up on screen um, to try and prove that to you, rather than just, just take my word for it, I'll throw a few images I've got over the years, um, now, while you're looking at these images, and if you're not inspired by them, you don't enjoy them, um, remember that it's probably not to do with the, the kit, it's probably not to do with the gear, it's very much to do with the uh, awful photographer. So while these images are going around, uh, it's perfect time for me to, to try and enforce that motto, which I keep saying. I'm going to keep saying it, I'm going to bore you to death with it, but yeah, upgrade yourself, not your gear. And what I mean by that is, the money you could spend on buying the, the best lens and the best camera, spend it on getting yourself out there in some nice locations, testing yourself, upgrading yourself, learning something. And another quote for you, I've nixed this one from uh, Jeremy Payne. He's a great YouTuber, a great photographer. He's just done a, a video on how to get started in landscape photography and a few tips on how to improve. And his little quote is, the best gear is the gear you've got. And yeah, that sums it up. It's perfect little, uh, perfect little quote. Definitely check him out. There is a, hundreds of tips out there to help you improve your photography, like uh, shooting in RAW, learning to compose an image, uh, learning to edit. And you know, these, these are subjects I will talk about in the future, but they're not specific to your lens. These tips I'm about to give you are more to do with operating your lens and understanding it. So tip number one, finding the sweet spot of your lens. That's not some uh, dirty talk or anything it's it's to do with where your lens operates best where it performs best and where it's at its sharpest now to find this sweet spot what we do is we take its maximum aperture which will be raw right on the lens and we go up two full stops and you can use this chart here to, to figure it out so for this lens here my uh, kit lens we have a look at the front i'll shut up on this camera here you'll see um one colon 3.5 to 5.6 so that means the maximum aperture is variable in this lens so at 18 mil we will get f3.5 maximum aperture and then as, as we zoom through we'll get maximum aperture of f5.6 so to work this out with this chart we'll go f3.5 two full stops up will get us to f7.1 and then at the at the other end f5.6 two full stops up takes us to f11 so that means the sweet spot of this lens is somewhere between f7.1 and f11 once you have that little range so from f7.1 to f11 to find out exactly where it is it's just going to come down to using it a bit of trial and error for me i know this is f8 because i've used it for that long um but yeah it's just a matter of just testing it out and, and find out where it is or you could just cheat and use google That leads us to tip number two, and that is being able to dial that f-stop into your camera. Now, if you're shooting in, in automatic mode, the camera is going to pick what it thinks is the best aperture, it's the best shutter speed and the best ISO. And yeah, it's pointless learning that, that sweet spot if the camera is not going to use it. So this is where we need to shoot in manual. Um, I've done a video before, a little two minute tip, I'll leave a link up here. Um, 
and it's something I'd highly recommend. We can then take full control of the camera, get our little sweet spot, and make the shutter speed and ISO to suit. If not shooting in manual, at least be shooting in aperture priority. It's a good, that's a good way to get yourself up there. What this does is it you'll pick the f-stop and then the camera will do the rest to suit that. Tip number three, use a tripod. As a landscape photographer, you should be using one anyway. It'll help you uh, compose your images. Um, but more to do with your lens, these lenses, these kit lenses, what have image stabilization like the more expensive lenses. So what that means is if you were using longer shutter speeds because you're shooting in, in lower light or something like that, um, unless your hands are really, really steady, you're going to get a blurry image. So stick it on the tripod, rock steady, and take the picture. Tip number four is focusing. So there's, there's many different ways to focus, loads of different methods, and what I'd say is the right way, someone else will say is the wrong way, and vice versa. But this is the easiest way I've found to make sure you get sharp images. In the simplest forms, hyperfocal distance is the focal distance that gives you the best depth of field in an image. So if we imagine the landscape we've got in front of us, we've got some foreground and we've got some background. We want to get front to back sharpness. If we focus on the front, the background is going to be a bit blurry. And if we focus on the back, the foreground is going to be a bit blurry. So what we do is we focus somewhere in the middle that gets us sharp at the front and sharp at the back. And that distance in the middle that we're focusing to is the hyperfocal distance. So now we know what hyperfocal distance is, we need to know how to actually get to that distance, that mid-ground, where, where that point is. There's a few ways to do this, especially nowadays, now we've all got phones. There's calculators on your phones. I use photo pills, they've got a little calculator on it and they give you lots of information. You can put in what lens you're using and you get loads of information, it's really good. But the other way, which is a bit old school, is using cards. And this is the harder way, so we'll, we'll go through this and then you'll be prepared to do both. So here's a hyperfocal distance chart. Uh, you can get these on cards and then you can keep them in your bag, your photography bag for when you're in the field, you can refer to them. And along the top, we have focal distance. So this will be shown on your camera, 55 or 18, wherever you're at. And then along the side, we can see our f-stop. So whatever our sweet spot is, whatever's working for the scene. So you go along your, your f-stop and come down with your, your focal distance. And that number there, either in meters or feet, depends on which calculator or chart you're using, is your hyperfocal distance. So in theory, you focus on that distance given off the chart and you will get front to back sharpness in your image. Now there's a couple of problems here. One, these, these charts, these, these cards, don't know how close your foreground is, so you might not get it in focus. And the second problem is, you're not gonna have a tape measure up on a mountain layer to measure that hyperfocal distance. So this is where the second part of our method comes in. I will turn live view on, on the camera so I can see the scene on the LCD screen. I will guess where about that, that 10 meters is, I'll guess where about it is. Zoom in with your little plus sign, then focus, manually focus to that point. And then I'll take the shot, open the shot up, and then zoom in on the foreground and zoom in on the background to see if it is all sharp. Now, if the background's sharp but the foreground's not quite, I know my hyperfocal distance has been a little bit off. So I'll take the shot again, but I'll bring it a little bit closer where I've zoomed in and where I've focused, so, and vice versa. If the, if the foreground's really sharp but the background's not so much, I'll move that hyperfocal distance back a little bit. And this is like the really important tip, the focusing part. You know, you can get your sweet spot, you can be shooting in manual on a tripod, but if you're not focusing, if you've not got the foreground and background in focus, the image isn't going to look as good as it can do. So be really, you know, diligent with this part. If it takes you five or six attempts to get it right, so be it. So there's my four tips to get stunning images with your kit lens. Um, I, like I said, I'm very much a pro kit lens. I'm team kit lens over on this channel. The, the great bits of kit. If, if you can get stunning images with this, by the time you upgrade, your images are going to be even better. So just, just keep plugging away at this, keep trying, just 
learn as much as you can. They're great, they really are a good bit of kit. Right, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, turn notifications on, and uh, I'll see you on my next one. I've got plenty to talk about. If you want me to talk about anything specific, let me know in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll see you on my next one. Pro kit lens.